Hello, my name is Dave Yance. I am the heating refrigeration instructor here at the Kansas City, Kansas Community College Technical Education Center. This is normally called the HVAC program, but what it is is residential heating and air conditioning and commercial refrigeration. The term HVAC stands for heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and then we put a slash R on there and that stands for refrigeration. All of that falls under the category of what we're going to do in this program. We're going to talk a little bit about residential heating and air conditioning and commercial. And then we will go on from there. One of the first things you need to kind of understand about heating refrigeration is a theory where heat transfers from hot to cold. That is the principle by which how we heat and cool a house or a place of business. And we use those principles and we use our equipment to make that happen. So we can maintain a temperature inside the building that is comfortable for us. The ventilation part is air quality and in the field we call that IAQ, indoor air quality. And when we get into that we're talking filters and humidity and things that make the living more comfortable. Air conditioning is actually a term meaning conditioning of the air for comfort living. There's not very many places you can go to that doesn't have heating refrigeration in the building. I like to tell my students that you can't go to the moon without heating refrigeration. So it is a very vital part. So we'll get into all that out in the shop. Okay, we're out here in the shop now and we're going to take a look at the furnace that one of these three type of furnaces you will have in your house. And the first one we're going to look at is this one here. It is a train, but the brand name really doesn't matter. This furnace is what we call a natural draft furnace. It was probably in, this is probably in the range of about 25 to 30 years old. Uh, it was a efficiency furnace in its day, and it draws air from the house in through this opening and creates a draft up the flue and out. And that's where it gets its name, natural draft. In its day, it would be rated about 50 to 60% efficiency, meaning that about 50 to 60% of the gas consumed was converted to heat for the house. And that is the natural draft furnace. From this point, we migrated to what they call the induced draft furnace. Now this induced draft furnace in the efficiency rating is about 80%, meaning that 80% of the gas consumed is converted to heat and you're losing 20% up the flue. Um, basically the furnaces work the same, they just have added more efficient components and safety devices to get to the point to where the furnace achieves that efficiency. After the 80% efficiency furnace, we move into the 90% efficiency furnace. This again means that 90% of the fuel consumed is converted to heat for the home and you're only losing about 10% or less up to the flue pipe. The interesting thing to note here is that our flue pipe now is Schedule 40 plastic pipe, where with the other two types it was metal. And that's because the manufacturers designed a second heat exchanger to absorb that heat, which makes the furnace more efficient and allows us to vent this furnace out through the side of the house rather than going up through the chimney with the other two. So that is one of the three types of furnaces you will find in your home unless you have an electric furnace. And we have an electric furnace sitting here on the table. It works on total elect electricity. And it is, according to 
the manufacturers, it is rated the most efficient because you get one BTU of heat for one kilowatt of electricity. But when the homeowner takes a look at it, that kilowatt adds up and really drives your electricity bill pretty high. So even though it's high on the efficiency, it's probably not a furnace most people would choose unless they were using propane. It would be cheaper than using propane for a fuel. But those are the different types of furnaces you would find in your home, and that's what we're going to talk about in this course. Those three units that we looked at a few minutes ago are residential units. Now we're taking a look at a commercial unit. Uh, another name for this would be called a package unit. You find these on the rooftops of buildings and sometimes even alongside the buildings. It's called a package unit because on this side of the unit over here, is the air conditioning side and on this side over here from it, this area to here is the furnace area so we have the furnace and the air conditioner all put together in one package unit this is about a six ton unit which is pretty small for commercial commercial equipment gets a lot of that's up around 20 30 ton or larger um, but this one here, we have it set up so that we can train the students on. And uh, again, this would be in the category of about an 80% efficiency furnace. Once again, meaning that 80% of the gas consumed is converted to heat and we have 20% going up the flue. Uh, it's very much like the residential equipment, so when students are trained on residential, they can also work on commercial. A lot of techs like the commercial equipment because everything is combined in one area and it's pretty easy to work on. Uh, in your residential unit, usually your furnace is in the basement and your air conditioner is set outside. So you have a little more running back and forth, but it's the same thing. Once you know how to work on a residential unit, you're very qualified to work on commercial. On the back side of this unit is where the air comes out and it is ducted into the building by means of duct work that uh, carries the air throughout the building. And we will take a look at this later on. Uh, we'll go through it, we will fire the furnace and then we will fire the air conditioner and you will get a chance to see how that's worked, we will do some uh, troubleshooting, things that the technicians today are doing. Uh, everybody's starting to turn their furnace on now for the winter. So all the companies are doing what they call winter tune-ups. And that's where a technician would come out to your home and they would go through the furnace, check the operation, make sure all the safety components are working properly, the motors are oiled, and in the next video too, we'll go through some of those steps to show you what's going on. But once again, this is your commercial unit.